Hey friends, it's Dr. Mary Gardner with Laugh of Love, and I am super excited because this week is my birthday week. Yesterday was my birthday, and for my birthday week, I've got a special guest, um, and she is going to be talking to us about something that I started doing recently with my own dog, and it is with um, electromagnetic uh, um, a field, and she's going to tell us more about this. And I know that a lot of my friends and clients have asked me about non-pharmaceutical options to treat their pet for pain, for inflammation, um, and for many other different things. And, you know, we talked about lasers recently, and I love physical therapy and acupuncture and massage and range of motion and all these things. And this is another option that you can use in tandem to pharmaceutical uh, therapy, as well as if, if your pet is not tolerating it to add it on. So without further ado, I'm going to invite on Dr. Leilani Alvarez. And you are some hot stuff, director of big things at AMC. Tell me about this. Uh, well, thank you so much for inviting me, Mary. It's such a pleasure to be on with you and to meet you virtually. I was just saying, I want to go out to lunch with you. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a big shot. I'm just a regular person. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I am the head of the integrative and rehabilitative medicine department at the Animal Medical Center, big hospital in the city. Uh, stories. People are like, what? Your hospital's eight stories high? I'm like, yeah, well, actually there's nine floors. The ninth floor has our tank to our underwater treadmill. <laughs> okay, wait, I'm going to have to go there and we'll go to lunch when I'm there. So sure. Yeah. For people who don't know, the AMC is kind of like the John Hopkins of, of veterinary medicine. Like it's pretty good. Yeah, they say the, May the Mayo Clinic, but John Hopkins good too. <laughs> okay, sorry. Like it's big stuff. Like we all, it's internationally known. Like I was talking to a friend of mine who lives in the UK and he's like, oh, I know AMC, right? Yeah. So uh, you, know what I, you know what I found out, which I feel like they should advertise this more, but I didn't realize veterinary specialty medicine started at the animal medical center mm -hmm. so yes the hospital uh the, the hospital's been around since 1910 so it's a very old hospital oh my God. and the current building which was built in the early 1960s is in the middle of all the very well-known human hospitals. So we have Memorial Sloan Kettering, Ket uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering, um, Weill Cornell, a Hospital for Special Surgery. All these hospitals are, are like in a perimeter around our hospital. And the reason it was built there was so that veterinarians can train alongside human specialists. So the very first specialty in veterinary medicine, which was surgery, started at the Animal Medical Center. And what the other thing, and I'll, I'll stop about braving about my uh, bragging on my hospital, but I, I I do love I do love where I work. We are a nonprofit hospital. We're the largest nonprofit veterinary hospital in the in the world. So I, I did not know that. Okay, so now okay, you're director, head of integrative and rehabilitative. What does that mean? I know what that means, but. Uh, well, it means that I manage a team. There's about 10 of us on the team. We have, uh, there's five total veterinarians. So I have another staff doctor who uh, will be sitting for boards this March. Uh, so we have, we have specialties in veterinary medicine. I'm sure most of your listeners know that, but uh, you know, you go to a sports medicine doctor, if you if you have an injury, let's say to your ACL. So we have the equivalent specialty in veterinary medicine and it's called the American College of Veterinary Sports Medicine and Rehabilitation. So that means you go to vet school, you do an internship, and then you do a residency, then you sit for a board examination, and then you get to do what I do. And uh, so I have another staff doctor that works full time who's been completing residency training. And then I have two traditional residents that I'm training to become specialists in this area. And then we have interns that rotate as well. So these are veterinarians who graduate, graduated vet school last year, and then they're doing rotations through the Animal Medical Center. So we typically have five doctors, you know, rotating on our service. And then we have uh, three 
technicians who are also specialized in rehabilitation. So they are licensed veterinary technicians mm -hmm. who uh, I know some people call them nurses now. It's that's, you know, the, the invoke term, uh, but they, in addition to their LVT training, they've completed a certification in rehabilitation. So all of my technicians have that advanced training. And then in addition to that, we have assistants who help both the doctors and the technicians. And we're very busy service. We, we usually see about anywhere from 25 to 30 patients a day. Wow. And, and all we do is integrative medicine and rehabilitation. Uh, it's mostly dogs, but we will see some cats and then some really fun patients like birds, rabbits. Really? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I think if I was to pick a specialty, I would have I would have done what you do. I just having had knee surgery myself and a couple of surgeries. I just have appreciated rehabilitation and, and, um, and since I see so many weak and wobbly guys, you know, dogs and, and even cats too, towards the end, I know that they could do so much better with rehab and, and, um, you know, I don't want to, you know, rehab always sounds like to me that, it, that they're going to rehabilitate and not need it anymore. But sometimes we need, it's like exercise. We need to keep doing our exercises and a lot of these old guys aren't, um, doing them. So it's so helpful. And um, I'm going to need to have you back so we can really talk about rehab and have a long discussion because I, I think that would be huge. And I am definitely going to go visit AMC one day. I've never been there. Uh, I'd love it's, to have you. It's a, must. it's a must. So now before we talk about some cool uh, magnetic stuff, which we need to talk <laughs> about, I got to tell you, I've got some name envy on you. Dr. Leilani Alvarez. It's such a pretty name. Aw. I know Mary's a good one too, but uh, I love it. So it's so pretty. Um, I so named my I named my daughter Maria. So okay. I I Mary is a is a beautiful name. I know. I, if my mother is watching, I appreciate it. But Leilani is really pretty. I love it. Um, so I wanted to talk about this pulsed stuff, magnetic stuff. Can you tell me what the heck? So listen, I didn't. I, Wait a minute. I, <laughs> so I actually grew up, I was born and raised in New York, just outside the city. My father worked oh. in Manhattan. Oh. So we had, by the way, so we had, um, it, back then, this is in the 70s, there was a show called like the Magic Garden or whatever. And so for those of you up in the Northeast, you know the Magic Garden. And the and the host would be like, oh, and to, she'd look through a looking mirror. And this reminds me of this looking mirror. She'd be like, and, and you could write in your name. She'd be like, oh, I can so all look through the magic mirror. I see Cindy, I see Susie, and it would be like so great to have her say your name. So this reminds me of the magic. But what the heck is these things? Well, since we're on the topic, I I, I conducted a, a prospective clinical trial at the Animal Medical Center using this device. And the head of research at the Animal Medical Center called it the magic wand. So. <laughs> Okay. It's not magic. It is based on real science. Okay. Uh, this technology has been around for over a century. It uh, became, let's say, reborn in the 1930s. Uh, there were these diathermy machines that were used to improve bone healing. And back then, they generated heat. And so the technology has been more advanced. So now they don't generate any heat. And in fact, when you turn this cool thing on, um, you press the power button, you get the little blinking lights. Um, you don't, I actually injured my thumb, so I've been treating myself. So <laughs> I don't, I don't feel anything, uh, right. very comfortable. But what happens is uh, in the, in the right. opening of this, the field of energy goes in both directions. So it's really nice because let's say I had an injured wrist, it would treat all the way from the tip of my fingers, probably to my elbow by just me putting it here. So okay. you imagine you have a dog, you know, and, and they're a dachshund, I'm trying to get in the field here. And so let's say their head is like the tip of my finger and my elbow is their tail. You're essentially treating their whole body. Yeah. Which is pretty cool if let's say they have a ruptured disc and their back is hurting and you're trying to give medications, but that's zonking them out. They're not their normal self because the drugs are having all the side effects. Uh, that's actually what I studied is I wanted to know if it actually worked. Yes. When I started doing rehab, 
there's a lot of things, and this is just true for veterinary medicine, there's a lot of things that we do and we don't have the level of evidence that, that we often have on the human side. And being at the Animal Medical Center, leading residents and being a specialist, part, part of my mission is to further education and to validate the things that we're doing. So does it work? Mm. Because I don't wanna spend money and expose my patients to things if, if it's not working. Why, why spend money on something if it's not working? So one of the things that this, I had been using this device for many years before I did the clinical study, but, but one of the things that was reported by other rehab practitioners as being very effective was to treat dogs with intervertebral disc disease. So that's a, you know, a, an inflamed disc in their back, a ruptured disc. And so I did, I did the study, uh, 60 dogs. We, the company was great. So this is made by a CC Animal Health. They made, uh, back then it was actually a different design. So it was actually white and now, now it's black, but mm -hmm. um, they made, it was the coolest thing. So the device looked exactly the same. You press the power button, the little blink lights would come on, but it did not emit the field. So it's what we call a sham device. So it was to test, it was our placebo group. Oh, we're sneaky, yes. To see so, if it's really working. Yeah, so we didn't just do, because you know, a lot of studies like they'll ex expose one patient and the other one doesn't do it, but it's clear who, who got the treatment. Right. So everybody in the study was blinded. I was blinded, the nurses, the owner. So half the group of dogs got a device sent home with them that was the sham device. So it looked and felt and had the little blinking lights, but it didn't emit any therapy. And then we had the real device. And, and then we, you know, we measured some very objective measures to see what the effect was of the dogs that got the therapy versus the dogs that had the, the sham device. And that's a true clinical study because really? you're you're the you're hopefully getting rid of the placebo effect, right? Because mm -hmm. you you know I know that when I put this on, I I, I feel better probably just because I, I feel like I'm doing something good. And right. your brain is amazing. Your brain can heal just by the positive thoughts of helping. That's been proven too, right? Yeah. So, so I'm all for the placebo effect. Like if right. you think it helps, then do it because it actually could help just because your brain is helping. <laughs> right. So but, what did you find out of your 60, 60 dogs? 60 dogs were enrolled, 53 completed the study. That's yeah. very common in clinical studies. Not everybody completes it for various reasons. But that's considered a fairly large study in veterinary medicine. Um, I'm always jealous of the human studies. They have a thousand patients. You know, we don't we don't get that in our in our field. There, you know, we'll get like eight dogs. <laughs> the end, like, we call it the end, the end of two. Yeah, you know, it worked on eight dogs, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> the reality of our of our profession, but um, yes, so fifty three dogs completed the study, so that means ultimately half were getting the the real PMF, and it stands for it's PEMF, pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. I'm gonna put it up. I'm gonna yes, pulse. Oh, it's coming up there. Yes, electronic yeah. magnetic field therapy. So yeah. now, okay. What's really coming out of this? Electromagnetic, like what is, what's coming out? Yeah, so this is a good question. Um, you know, my son would like laugh. He's like, you're electrocuting patients. And I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> it is an electrical energy. It's an electrical energy. So, so just to dial back, like going down to the basics, when we look microscopically at cells, every cell in our body has a bioelectromagnetic field. Mm -hmm. And in fact, cells every day communicate with electricity, actually. Mm -hmm. And so the communication of nerves in particular is very mm -hmm. dependent on electric fields. So this technology is tapping into the natural bioelectric field that is already present in our bodies. And it's a very low energy field. So this is not, that's why you don't feel it because it's right. not like what you plug into your wall to turn on your lamp. Yeah, I'm not that, that. that could hurt you. This is a very low frequency that is, you don't feel it because it's that low, but it chimes in with your body's normal 
bioelectrical fields that involve signaling in the body. And this particular signal that's emitted has been FDA approved. So that's also really cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's 27.1 megahertz. That's what the FDA approval is for reducing soft tissue pain and inflammation anywhere in the body. So okay. that's FDA approved. And then what's unique about this particular device is it's beyond that frequency. So there's a width, a pulse width, and also a frequency, like how often it sends the signal. And then the antenna, like the field of the antenna. So for this one, it's going 20 centimeters both directions. Okay. Um, and that's unique to this device. This device is not the same as, because you could go to CVS, yes. go online, there's a lot of devices out there, but they can vary in the width, the frequency and the antenna of the delivery of that low field electricity. And so, so to dumb it down even more, I need this, yes. How it works is this low field elect this low electric field that's emitted taps into your body's electrical fields that sets off an anti-inflammatory signaling. So your body releases little chemicals that send signals to reduce inflammation and reduce pain. Okay. So, you know, we all listen to radio and internet and all, and all that's kind of magic too. So we know stuff works. <laughs> so if we can trust that. I trust this. So pain, and you know, you mentioned like, okay, so, so like the neurons and everything, our cells in our body are all using this electricity, right? And so it's reducing, so it's sending out anti-inflammatory messages, right? So this is arthritis. It's amazingly helpful for, right? Disc. Um, and even things I was reading like a UTI or, or, or like in, not a UTI, but like the inflammation of, of sometimes like, um, you know, yeah, feeling know. lower urinary tract. So I'm trying to think of that one. Right. So yeah. some things you might not even think of. Yeah. This could be used for ear infections, uh, anything in flat, anything with that itis, particularly yeah. if it's soft tissue. So. I, I have had the most success treating, for example, we've seen, I've had some amazing success cases using this PMF device for dogs that came in with like an acute allergic reaction and they had their whole body with edematous. I mean, I had a dog who's literally all their legs were like triple the size. And, mm -hmm. and red and inflamed. And we put one of these devices on in each leg, so literally four devices on all four legs. And you could, I actually measured before and after and it went down by a centimeter. So it's it's particularly good. That's what it's FDA approved for is reduction of soft tissue pain and inflammation. Okay. So definitely your cystitis, pancreatitis, Ooh, wounds, it's huge for wounds. That's yeah, actually- sure. So you're doing your thumb there, right? Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, I have it on my back right now because I hurt my back the other day. So I'm using this. Yeah, right let, now. Me, let me get my therapy going because right. you know, might as well be, be efficient and I'm going to treat my right. thumb. Right, let's multitask. Yeah. Okay, so now what about like nerve pain? That's what I study. That's what my study was looking at was dogs recovering from back surgery who'd had a ruptured disc. They went to surgery and these dogs are paralyzed. I mean, they yeah. wake up, they can't walk and we're trying to regenerate their nerve conduction. So that's anecdotally, anecdotally, that is what this device was most popular for amongst rehab veterinarians was to treat dogs that had lost nerve conduction and had nerve pain mm -hmm. from these bulging discs. So, you know, I don't have a study demonstrating like the specific, you know, that it's actually regenerating the nerves. But along my study, uh, NC State also did a study on the same type of dog. So dogs recovering from post-op hemilaminectomy. And interestingly, something they did that I didn't do in my study is they tested for uh, a biomarker for spinal cord injury. 
And that biomarker went down in the dogs that got the PMF therapy. So we know, we know definitively that this device is reducing the mediators that are involved in nerve injury. And there's been several studies, like there was a cat crush injury and a rat crush injury where the nerves were just completely obliterated and they were treated with the PMF and there was regrowth of nerve. Okay. Now what about, cause somebody was asking about a leg amputation, nerve pain from that, or like, you know, you, you can have refer, the nerve pain that can extend down a leg yeah. or an arm after, you know, a disc or, or some other problem and just putting it on the arm could help. Yes. Yes. Most definitely. Most definitely. And you can use different, um, the frequency that you're using the device. So yeah, exactly. That's what you would do. Or, or my other favorite, if you have a headache, you know, you can oh. wear it on oh. your <laughs> Wait, No joke. Okay, we may have to take oh, this yeah. off. I get migraine. Migraine? migraine. Yeah. So wait, I have, a, I, have a, I have advice for you. So oh. I actually learned this from my girlfriend. I won't say her name because I don't have her permission. But she puts it on a hat, a baseball hat, so you don't look quite as silly. Right. And then you just wear the baseball hat with the device on there. You know, we might have a second, a second a vertical market for the, but this doesn't look too bad. It looks like a headband. Yeah. That looks good on you. Didn't look that good on me. <laughs> I'm rocking a headband. I'm rocking the Sissy Loop headband. Um, now, <laughs> so, okay. I've got a couple of questions here and I can go, clearly you and I could get a little crazy in our Facebook lives. So I know we just, we need to go out for drinks and do Facebook live. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love it. Okay, I am, I've got so many questions. I am, okay, the, the migraine thing, I actually had one last night, so this is great. I am a huge, uh, I don't want to say advocate because 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 I'm not an advocate for it, but I had a dog with laryngeal paralysis. Yeah. So I am uh, a, oh, I got, somebody's asking about it. Too. Now I've screwed up my bangs, here we go. Um, and so with LARPAR, laryngeal paralysis, and my Doberman, may he rest up, upstairs, uh, uh, I was thinking that this would be good if they have a respiratory, you know, distress. So it's, so it's inflamed. Particularly. And, yes. So, because remember soft tissue swelling and edema. So perfect for LARPAR. So LARPAR so, owners. Or your little, your, your Frenchies, your brachycephalic. Oh, please, yes. That are having upper airway. Like they're their you know, their noses are like this right. and they've got all that extra tissue in their, in their mouth. I, I used it. I've had, dogs come in through the ER and when you're popping them into that oxygen chamber and you gave them their tour, but whatever, put this on their neck. What's nice about this is it's non-invasive. You don't have to touch the patient. You just put it over their head and, and it's treating them. So it's not, it's not to cure the, the lar part of disease, but it's to help with the swelling that happens because they can't breathe and they get into that respiratory it's a, it's a vicious cycle. And exactly. And I have a LARPAR group here. So. Yeah. And I want to emphasize that you shouldn't not go to the doctor, right? Because you have an emergency situation. Your dog's not breathing. you got to go to the ER. But you could bring mm -hmm. this along and ask the doctor to slip that on their head while they're doing their other treatments. Because, yeah, it should help to reduce. Because what's closing the airway is the soft tissue mm -hmm. inflammation and edema. And that's what this helps to reduce. I, I love this idea. And and at the end of this, I'm going to tell everybody for a discount code that a sissy loop have, has given us because I think it's so good to have just in the emergency situation to to, to place it on, on them. While we're on the LARPAR train, uh, somebody asked about, uh, they had a tie back done, uh, or no, at least I had it. And what about the back end weakness? So could this help stimulate the nerves that happen with geriatric onset laryngeal paralysis? Not, uh, it's not a strengthening okay. device. Okay. It really, think of this as, a, as an anti-inflammatory. So okay. it's almost like, you know, let's say that, you know, for, let's talk about ourselves, because I think then, then you can maybe relate it to your animal. So you hurt yourself and you have pain and swelling. You would take an Advil. Mm -hmm. Yep. You could also do the device. Okay. The loop. So think of it as an anti-inflammatory treatment. Okay. 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 Perfect. So it's Perfect. not going to build strength. Nope. That's where, that's where your water treadmills coming in. Exactly. That's where you go to the rehab, but this is for pain and inflammation. That's what it treats pain and inflammation. 
Perfect. Which is, is, is massive in the, in the LARPAR world is that inflammation and getting into breathing restriction and, and whatnot. Now, we, we, I, I mean, we joked, but it's serious about the head. Now, what bring, what, now you may not be familiar with this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What about with cognitive dysfunction and anxiety? Because I believe the assisting loop has like the, the calmer. Yes. So I, I have to share a personal story here. The, so, so just so everybody knows, this is the ACC loop. Yeah. And there's another device made by the company called the Calmer K9. K9, Calmer K9, Calmer K9. Yeah. Yeah, that's the loop. There's I just got a new one. So that's I bought a new one. Cool. Very nice. Um, I wish I actually should have my box with me for the Calmer K9 because that's a different frequency. Oh, this is good to know. Yes, so they're not interchangeable. Um, that device was studied by Margaret Gruen at NC State. She's a behaviorist, I believe. Um, and that device was demonstrated in a pilot study to significantly reduce anxiety. Um, so dogs suffering from separation anxiety. And it's and it's it's worn on the head. They have so basically it has a, a a wrap that goes around the dog's neck and, and even a body wrap. And then it would sit kind of like this behind their right. head. Like a little halo. Like a halo, yeah. Cause you know, our dogs are angels. So you might as well give them a halo. And uh, my own dog suffers from epilepsy and anxiety. And I gotta tell you twice now, she had, she, she gets really restless and you know that the seizure is coming on. Mm -hmm. And I put that calmer canine on her and Twice now, no seizure. Really? Yeah. Right, because I know what you mean. It's that it's that you you know it's coming. So yeah. my girl, my dog Sam, she's a girl named Sam, and she's like we were mentioning earlier, she's got a uh, spinal lymphoma. So she's on prednisone and she's 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 been on chemo and everything. So I've been hooking this up to her help him up harness, which is my personal favorite harness. So she wears it all the time. So it's easy because I've just kind of like used a hair tie. It sits on top and, and I just kick it off a few times a day. Yeah. And um, but she's starting to get cognitive dysfunction and anxiety and, and whining. So I'll admit that I put it on her head. So yeah. I need the other one. <laughs> yes, I don't think it's wrong for you to put it on her head. Right. Okay. What's really, really cool about the calmer canine is that this was studied because of its effects on the amygdala, which is the part of your brain that controls emotion. Mm. and um, might be more effective for cognitive dysfunction to use okay. the Palmer K9 because it is a different signal. Um, okay. so whereas whereas this device, the CC loop, is for inflammation and pain, cognitive dysfunction is neither of those. Right. And okay. so it's really affecting, you know, neurotransmitter release like dopamine and there's atrophy of the brain. And, and so it's a, a completely different topic med medically than when we're talking about our arthritis or a disc, you know, a bulging disc in the back. Okay. Uh, and I, I, I frankly know less about the calmer canine because I'm not a behaviorist, but, but I find it fascinating that this was studied out of NC State um, and the pilot study was published and they're working on a larger clinical trial, but it does appear to be effective. And so for, for brain things, you know, for cognitive dysfunction, I would consider the calmer canine over the loop. But if you have the loop, you can certainly do it. It's safe. Um, a couple of just safety things for the audience yes. to know. Um, it's a very, very safe modality, but you do not want to use it if your dog has a pacemaker oh. or if you yourself have a pacemaker, you would want to not be near it when you turn it on because it will mess with the signal because it is electrical. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, Good. Potentially, if your dog has an arrhythmia, like if it's being treated for atrial fibrillation okay. or something okay. like that, it mm -hmm. could mess with that um, because it's those are again the heart works via electrical okay. signals. And as soon so, as you said that, I was going to ask that because yeah. okay, so that's good to know. Yeah. Any other, other than that, other than that, you know, I consider it very safe. We used to be pretty cautious about recommending it with tumors and your, your own dog has lymphoma. We do know that this device promotes blood flow to come to the area. 
And so in addition to reducing inflammation, it can bring more blood flow. So there's a bit of controversy on, you know, do you put it over a tumor? Can you maybe bring more blood flow to the area? The bottom line is we don't know. I don't have a study to say to you, you know, that it's safe for a tumor. But here's what I can say. This device was first studied in women who were recovering from breast cancer and they had breast reconstruction surgery. And in fact, they were made to go under their bandages, like, you know, over the breast tissue. And it would just uh, automatically cycle every two hours. And by the way, the, the company does make an automatic. Um, so if you have an acute postoperative patient, there's a device that will automatically cycle. So you don't have to press the button anymore. It will just cycle on and off, which is really, really cool for those cases. But anyway, coming back to the cancer thing, uh, there's been several reports of tumors that are very inflamed that are, you know, a lot of the pain related to cancer is from the inflammation. Right. And this device can reduce that inflammation. So I, I always educate clients and I let them know, like, look, your dog is dealing with this tumor. We're doing the chemo, the radiation. If you want to try this other device, it might help to improve quality of life, but you need to understand that we don't know. We don't know the effects of, could it bring more blood flow to the tumor? So it needs to be an educated decision where we're definitely doing something adjunct that's alternative. It's a palliative treatment. Uh, I personally have seen it help tremendously in the cases of these, particularly the really inflammatory tumors. Yeah. And um, again, it's it's such a low frequency. It works at the biological fields. Uh, I, I, I personally use it. There are other practitioners who avoid it in the face of cancer. So that okay. needs to be a decision you make okay. together with your veterinarian. Okay. Or myself. <laughs> with my dog, right? So, um, how often can one use this? In acute recovery. So let's say the dog or the cat, whatever it is that you're treating has acute inflammation. So they just got hit by a car or they just had a respiratory issue from LARPAR. You can use it every two hours. Even sometimes people will use it like continuously. Yeah, okay. Because it goes for 15 minutes. Yes. So the device, the standard, the standard product, when you press the button, yep. it will shut itself off after 15 minutes, one five. Yep. Okay. If you get the automatic device, it will turn itself on every two hours. So it comes on, delivers 15 minutes of treatment, and then it shuts off, and then it comes back on in another two hours. So that's meant to be for acute recovery, acute inflammation, for chronic conditions like your lower back pain, or <laughs> for our dogs with arthritis or dogs with bulging discs. Uh, typically what I do, so for the first week, I would treat them four times a day. Okay. And then after that initial week, I would reduce it usually to, you know, twice daily and then maybe once a day. And then maintenance, you might just do it like once or twice a week or less, you know. So okay. then you can just treat it as needed. Um, owners get very good at, you know, they know if it's helping or if it isn't. And you can, it's almost like popping that Advil. You know, you're not feeling good. You turn it on, you administer the treatment. It's very safe. You can do it repeatedly. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, it's more that your battery will run out and you'll have to buy another device. <laughs> right. And there, okay. And you can use it as needed to treat the symptoms. So where can someone get the device? Does it have to be a veterinary prescribed? It is. It does require a veterinary prescription. Okay. If you're lucky enough to have a veterinarian who's dispensing them, you can get it from the veterinarian's office. So we, we carry this at the Animal Medical Center. So our patients, I can just send it home with them. Okay. If your veterinarian does not carry the device, you can go on a CC's website, and I see you have the, the, the web address there, and you can search for a doctor who prescribes it, but you do need a prescription. Okay, so let's say I convinced my doctor to uh, to do this. They can help me get get one, right? So they I could they could call a sissy loop and and it'll be like let's say a one time thing. They're just buying it for for this one patient. Yeah. So, but they okay. Yeah. So it's not like us veterinarians need specialists to see like 
prescribing rights. We can do it for our for our families. And, at work. Correct. Any veterinarian can prescribe it. And yes, so they just, it yes. So they, they we do need the approval, the prescription from the veterinarian, but you don't need any specialized training in order to be able to prescribe this device. Perfect. Thank you. That's, you said it way better than me. And so the Sissy Loop uh, or Sissy Health here has given us a discount code for those that are interested. Coming up. So Dr. Mary. So if you tell them Dr. Mary, uh, it's 15% off good for the end of this month. So um, that I hope will be helpful for those that want to that want to try this this out. Um, I've got a few questions, and I know that I kind of tried to answer or 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 sneak <laughs> sneak the question in because you just answered it uh, for me. But um, so we got that one epilepsy. You said, uh, do you use this one on your epilepsy dog or the calmer the calmer one on? Yep. Okay. Good. And uh, same thing with like separation anxiety and lightning or lightning storm phobia. Storm phobia. The calmer canine. Yes. Okay. I have a I have a separation anxiety dog also besides Sam with her cognitive. So I'm going to I'm going to be getting that for sure. So Rich asked that, and then Ashley asked, "Is there different levels of pulse therapy?" So that's yes. So you just have to get the right device, and so you're not the person isn't selecting a, a therapy. You're just getting the device that gives out the right stuff. Correct. Okay, but the, the thing to remember there is you can't go online and search PMF and just order it online because the part that's FDA approved is that 27.1 megahertz. But the pulse width, the pulse frequency, the antenna, that's going to be variable with different companies. This device is what has been clinically studied in dogs to be effective. And it was also studied in humans for that breast reconstruction surgeries and many other ones. So this signal is unique to okay. this company. So just going to go run to and, and buy these anywhere. <laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> it is not. It's a PMF is widely available, but yeah. the signals are different. Okay. Cause listen, I was trying to do a little Googling and, and finding these things. So you can't, just, don't just go run to, to Walgreens. Correct. Or as seen on TV. Correct. As seen on this TV. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I have, Susie asks a question. I have an older dog with a seizure, seizure, <laughs> seizure disorder. Could you please send me information on the holistic neuropathic treatment? So I would say to have her look at the calmer, the canine calmer. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, in, you know, just to, put it in basic terms, if what you're trying to treat is anxiety or a behavioral disorder, I would go with the calmer canine. If you're trying to treat pain or inflammation, go with the ACC loop. Perfect, yes, okay, yep. And Ashley is one strength for the arthritis. Is there, Dr. Leilani, because I could talk to you all day, so I better watch myself. Is there anything I forgot to ask or I should we should tell everybody? Let's see. One thing that I've come across is, well, one thing for everybody to know that I think you probably already can see how easy it is to use because you just press the power button and then you can forget about it. So I like to tell people, you know, use it when your dog or your cat is asleep and you can just lay it on top and treat. It will treat anything inside the circle. And remember, okay. it goes both directions, but it doesn't treat outside of the circle. Okay. You know, so if I want to treat my face, my face has to be here. It won't treat it if I have it to the side. Okay. <laughs> but with that said, with that said, I don't want to advocate to leave your pet unattended with the loop. I have had dogs eat it. Oh, okay. okay. So now that the company does make, it's called the, the loop aid. And it's yeah. basically a, like a body wrap with Velcro and you can Velcro it onto them. Like you, you're using the help them up harness yes. and that's great. So just make sure that if you're going to turn this on and leave your dog unattended, that they can't remove it off their body and ingest it. Okay, perfect. It's, it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare, but I just want to put it out there okay. that, um, you know, you can, you can, very safely put this on your pet, but do it, you know, supervise them I'm while. Keep an eye. Okay, right. Yeah, well, my girl Sam, she's barely moving, but in her younger days, she would have eaten this. Um, 
So, uh, and so for those of you who joined late, assisianimalhealth.com is uh, where you can get some more information. Your veterinarian may or may not be familiar with this, like not to throw, you know, vets under the bus. Not everybody knows about this. This is, uh, you know, it's, it's not as commonly talked about, you know, lectured in vet school. And I saw the, the, uh, the canine, the, the calmer canine just recently at, or last year at a, at a vet, uh, um, you know, exhibit. So it wasn't even very common for me even to know. So, um, so this is just a really great non-pharmaceutical aid in, 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 in these, uh, in both arthritis and pain. And then also with, uh, with the, the anxiety. Um, so let me just see real quick here. So a, Anna has a large male. Uh, oh, it's a show. Can I show this? Oh, look at that. <laughs> I learned something new. Sorry, Anna. Put your name up there. A large male belly band can help in place too, especially for disc treatments. So that's awesome. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's perfect because, you know, they have Velcro on the top. And so you can just Velcro it on. Yeah. And actually, when I did my study, um, we, we used like bandage material to just keep it on the pet so that it wouldn't come off. Okay. Yeah. And this, that's another important thing to say is this will penetrate anything soft padded. So if you, your dog has a blanket on them, you can put it on top of the blanket and it will go through it. Your okay. dog has a leg that's been bandaged. Cause let's say it has a wound. You can put it over the leg. And even though the bandage is on there, it will still penetrate through that. It can't penetrate through metal but it will penetrate through any anything that's soft material, you know, cotton, bandage material. That's another really great benefit is that if you have a dog that's recovering from surgery and has a bandage, mm -hmm. you don't have to remove the bandage to treat it with the PMF. Nice. Okay, so my neighbor had uh, had a dog. We, we, we needed to bandage something. We used a sports bra. It was a little dog. So we had a little sports bra on the dog and it worked great. And then I like stuck this underneath the sports bra and it held it. Perfect. <laughs> so, listen, we come up with some great ideas. Yeah. And um, there's been some people that have jumped on late, but all these questions we answered already. So I don't want to keep you any longer. And I want to thank you for your time. Uh, AMC, a sissy loop also. Thank you for giving us the discount code, Dr. Mary. And I hope to convince you to come on again one day in the future. <laughs> oh, I'd love to. This is fun. Yeah. And I definitely cannot wait to go to AMC and get a, and get a tour. And maybe we can even do a little, a little backstage tour and show everybody some cool stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much again. And everybody who's watching, thank you so much uh, for, loving your, for loving your gray muzzles. And, and I, I truly hope this can help in some way. Uh, with with their pain and and uh, inflammation and just just helping the caregivers do something right so awesome all right well till next time thank you again take care everybody.